Hello, my beautiful friends, my fellow space blobs and sparkly blobs and peace-filled blobs and all the forms that we are embodying in this moment, wherever we are in the world, wherever we are in our process. You know me, if you've been here for a little while, I feel very passionately about the fact that we need to make safe, soft, landed places to explore things like eclipse seasons. There's so much drama, so much inflammatory language that starts showing up around eclipses, around themes that have to do with change. It's a very popular way to do it. It's the way this world works. It's attention capturing. It gets us all hyped up and excited and floods us with different emotions and uh, chemicals from our bodies. But I am very much of the opinion that it's so important to be able to connect with the natural rhythms of this universe in ways that feel like we're coming home to ourselves. And something that I think is so important as we dive into the Libra solar eclipse and our second of two eclipses this eclipse season is that Libra is a sign associated with peace, with cultivating peace, with developing the skill of peacemaking and the creation and the stewardship of peacemaking in living a life here in the world. It is a deep practice and it's one that requires intentionality and energy and focus and trying things out and experimentation and really intentionally cultivating that sense of peacefulness. It's a lifetime of learning for each of us in that way, but I want to take that principle when we're talking about Libra and put it into this conversation here. This is meant to be a conversation that helps us continue to do that, develop a sense of peace in ourselves. We started off this eclipse season with that powerful Pisces lunar eclipse, which is so much to do with this big energetic field of vision, kind of getting in touch with future versions of ourselves, but also doing a lot of behind the scenes, knowing and discerning more in the energetic field, less in this kind of embodied field that we are in here. And now with this second eclipse in this season, which is the Libra solar eclipse, we're working with a little bit more of this incisiveness and this knowing and this recognition that Libra is so good at doing. I know Libra often gets teased for being indecisive, but I think that's in a very disempowered sense when we don't accept that we have many selves and many expressions in a lifetime and that it's okay to make smaller decisions for ourselves in the day that we are in, in the season that we are in, and to trust ourselves more. As we get closer to working with the Libra archetype and its pure form of cultivating peace, cultivating understanding and listening, we are actually very well equipped to make beautiful, incisive decisions that allow us to see and make distinctions about what's important and where our vital life force energy is going. This Libra solar eclipse is our final eclipse in Libra while we have the south node of the moon in Libra. That is going to be shifting in January. So we've had the north node in Aries and the south node in Libra for since last summer. And it's about an 18 month cycle for the north and south nodes. So in January, the north node is going to move into Pisces. The south node is going to move into Virgo. So this solar eclipse here in Libra is a closing out to some extent, even though we have three more months of the south node in Libra. This is a really great point to reflect on the lessons and the work that we've been doing as a collective and individually when it comes to that south node in Libra work. Because that has been about how we kind of hold old foundations and patterns in order to not ruffle feathers, in order to keep keep things in a status quo and thinking about if that's been serving us or not if that's still working, where that wants to be shifted, how we want to connect with others. So one of the first things I want to say about this solar eclipse is it could be a very kind of retrospective moment in a way here 
as we look back to through time through this last summer possibly throughout our lives as well and learning and, and noticing what we've learned about expressing what we need knowing what we need cultivating a sense of being able to pay attention to that when we're in scenarios when we're in contexts being able to actually hear oh i know i need this and expressing it what have you learned about that? How has that changed for you? How has communication changed? How has connection changed? What have you learned about how to express things or where it's scary to express things or where you've realized you have a completely different preference that you never allowed yourself to have before? This is a really great time to reflect on all of that. Also, the other part that I really love about this kind of closing out of the south node in libra it's been a it's been a very intense learning with the south node in libra for everybody i think what parts of yourself are just for you and what aspects are something that you want to share more of this is a great question to reflect on during this lunar eclipse or the solar eclipse i'm so sorry i so much going on <laughs> this month what are aspects you want to share and what do you want to keep for yourself I think this is a really interesting question that's coming up in the age of technology in the age of social media as it just keeps growing and growing and growing and being ever-present all around us there's this feeling like we need to be sharing it all you know we need to be sharing every opinion every revelation we need to be authentically self-expressing constantly to those around us and if we're not doing that are we doing enough but I think part of the question here in the work with the south node in libra and during this eclipse is are are you allowed to just have some things that are for you like you don't have to express them to the whole world you don't have to share of yourself all the time you don't have to always be open to everything all the time and where have you been holding some things back that you'd really love to share and what is getting get called forward for you to share and just exploring and thinking about those two themes this solar eclipse is conjunct Lilith. So Sun, Moon, and Lilith are very, very close together during this eclipse. And kind of the phrase that came to mind when I thought about this conversation happening during this eclipse is knowing when growing into your next form is uncomfortable because it doesn't fit the status quo. I think when we're growing into a new form, it is uncomfortable. And part of our job is kind of figuring out what's uncomfortable because it's not right for us. You know, like it's, this is uncomfortable because I'm crossing my own boundaries or I'm forcing myself to perform something that's not true for me. That's a great question to ask. And when is it uncomfortable because we're worried we're gonna let people down, we're worried we are going to upset the system, we're worried we're gonna fail, we're worried we're gonna be judged, we're worried that we're gonna just shake everything up and that feels really uncomfortable because this solar eclipse, this new moon energetic that we're working with here, is going to be showing many of us, I think, some really clear insights into where we're holding ourselves back because of the discomfort of breaking up the status quo. And the status quo can be anything, you know, just, just the way you have your life set up. It doesn't always have to be about toppling the system from the, the top down. It can just be like challenging some of the status quo things we have for ourselves, even the way we tell our own stories or the way that we think we need to show up in the day to day. So some of the themes as well that come with this is letting others down, even if we just think we're going to be letting them down. Because a lot of times other people aren't thinking about us as much as we think they are. And there are exceptions to that. But a lot of times we think we'll let everybody down by doing this shift or change. And no, we won't. So some questions that might come up that you can play with for this solar eclipse are, what expectations of others are you trying to live up to? Is it working? Is it making them happier? Is it making them more comfortable? Is it doing all of the things that we think it's doing for us to hold the old shape? Is it true for you? Is it true for you that holding that old shape is comfortable? How does it feel to try and hold that old shape? What expectations can you let go of with this solar eclipse? This is a fantastic time to release and allow expectations and demands to be shed to 
lift and kind of move out of our system, I'm going to be doing an activation on that topic over on my Patreon. If you want to join me for a little bit of deep diving for this solar eclipse, I hope to see you there. And what past expectations can also leave during this eclipse? Sometimes we carry, I think, expectations from past seasons. Like when we were in elementary school or high school or when we were younger, we might have had an expectation from somebody about excelling at something or hold being polite in a specific way that we're still kind of carrying in the back of our mind. This is a fantastic time to release that. One of my favorite writers, Devin Price, was just doing a post recently about how trying to be as convenient and out of the way as possible for other people isn't this great act of service that we think it is. Like people, if we are out of the way and we are being as polite and convenient as possible for people all around us, mostly what that's going to result in is people just forgetting we're even there and just taking it for granted that all these things are happening. They don't even know how. It doesn't do this amazing act of service that we think it does. And then in fact, being a little bit inconvenient is part of what makes life interesting. And I think Lilith and Libra definitely brings those themes to the front, especially here with this solar eclipse. Like where are we just trying to be convenient and make life convenient? And it's, it's actually leaving us feeling a little bit uninspired. A conjunction with Lilith is always going to bring up really interesting questions around how we're self-expressing and where we are cutting ourselves off from just making changes because we think it's going to let people down. We think it's going to disrupt things. And sometimes it's not going to be as disruptive as we think it is. And sometimes a little bit of inconvenience can really actually open up a whole world of deeper flow than, than trying to hold on to the old convenience. So those themes are going to be coming up. We also have another conjunction with this solar eclipse, which is Mercury. So we've got Mercury, Lilith, Sun, Moon, they're all hanging out together in the sign of Libra. And Mercury is the messenger. Mer Mercury is the weaver between worlds. Mercury plays with the light and the shadow, the upper world, the, the underworld and intertwines all of these things and can play with the light and shadow as Mercury wants. A Mercury in alchemy is also known as the seat of the soul because it's this very active agent that's moving through all these processes and I've always really loved that description of Mercury. And with Mercury here conjunct all of this energy as the messenger is bringing in a lot of clear sight a lot of knowing. And like I said, I think Libra is actually one of the most incisive, decisive signs and archetypes we can work with when it is empowered, which means we have to accept we have many versions of ourselves and we have to accept that it will take the time it takes to get that information and that it will take quiet and peace in order to often get our decisiveness. It cannot be brought about by force. So once we have those principles down, Libra can be one of the best places for knowing. So some questions to explore here are, what do you know already? A lot of times we have a lot of information that we don't let ourselves know because we feel like we need to wait a little longer or it's not valid enough. What do you already know? What are you ready to prioritize and focus on? What are some things you can think about right now? Like what are your priorities? What are your focal points? Where do you want your energy to be going? And where are you ready to stop leaking your energy? All of these questions. This solar eclipse and this eclipse season in general is really setting us up for next year because it's not that far away, weirdly enough. It's setting us up for Pluto and Aquarius. It's setting us up for new North Node and South Node in Pisces and Virgo. It's setting us up for very, very different energies moving forward. And so figuring out where we're getting pulled, where our priorities are coming into play is really, really powerful. What messages or ideas are coming in? This is a great time to free write, free scribble, play with art supplies, dance around to your favorite music, and let messages flow through because it's a very communicative time over these few days around the solar eclipse. Also, what I like to do is just kind of like get soft focus and look at the horizon and notice what I see. 
Do I see anything coming in? Do I notice anything important coming in? Do I notice that there's something culminating and percolating in a really, really powerful way? It's a great time for feeling through all of that. So we are working with a lot of powerful energy and it is a time of kind of knowing ourselves and getting to know ourselves and understanding some really, really important fundamental things about what's important to carry forward with us as we move through. Let's see what the cards have to tell us. Um, I always love to, to end these chats with a little intuitive tarot in this gentle way. I still love the idea, just going into the solar eclipse, that how can I use and cultivate peace on myself as a tool, as a tool of kindness and, and understanding and curiosity and intuition. Using peace on myself can heighten my intuition and help me see more clearly. King of Swords, here's that decisiveness, here is that clarity that we were just talking about with Mercury. There is kind of just this, oh, yeah, I see, I understand, I, I know why that's important, I know why I need to focus on that. Two more cards came out, and it's so interesting, the devil, which I just saw a comment the other day saying, Nobody has anything nice to say about the devil. I have plenty of very important things. The devil is what a very important aspect of living a life. And the king of pentacles. Um, so very interesting here for me. Um, part of what I'm seeing here is a nod to this final Pluto and Capricorn season that we're moving through. We're just weeks away from closing out Pluto and Capricorn happening in November. And this eclipse season, I think, is very helping a lot of us in our energy fields to incorporate it and release it. But I'll get to that in a second. So King of Swords is very straightforward. This is not a complex image. I think if you see, just see this without even having worked with tarot, you see a, a figure who is at a point of decisiveness, of leadership. And for me, what I see here is it's a reminder to come back to kind of basics with this solar eclipse. It doesn't need to be complicated. I've talked a lot about all sorts of uh, conjunctions and conversations, but at its core, what do you know? What do you prioritize? What matters to you right now? Where do you want to put your energy? Paying attention to that and holding that and honoring that and just letting that speak for itself. It's that simple with King of Swords. The devil. <laughs> so this is a really important point in life. Whenever this card shows up, it's like, oh, we're looking at old systems and old foundations. By the time we get to working with the devil and the major arcana, it's been something that's developed for a long time. Habits, routines, the status quo, a foundation that maybe perhaps at one point held us, but is now kind of keeping us stuck where we feel like we have to keep going back over the old and we have to keep holding it up and upholding it. And it's that point of discomfort, you know, where it's just like, okay, I can sit here, I can stay in this old foundation, but it doesn't feel great. I feel a little bit trapped. I feel a little bit pent up. I feel a little bit like I can't really express myself. And this point of kind of discomfort is so powerful because it helps us with the knowing that the King of Swords is saying here, right? Like what foundations, you know, what over that whole Pluto and Capricorn phase that was expected, that was a foundational expectation does not need to come with you after this eclipse season, after this season of change, energetic shifting around, you know, what do you not have to carry anymore? What are you allowed to break free of? This new moon and this solar eclipse wants breaking free. We have Lilith here. Lilith wants us to leave the establishment and go home to ourselves, go home to yourself. And that's what that invitation is. I love that it ends with King of Pentacles too, which is such a grounded, gentle energy. Sometimes breaking out of those old foundations isn't about using violence or blowing up the world. Sometimes it's about choosing the gentle, slow next step 
that allows us to leave those old foundations. And I think this is really important. We're talking about self-expression and setting boundaries and quitting people pleasing. We can't expect to do that by trying to burn out our circuits and burn down every bridge around us. One of the best ways to access Libra and energy and initiate with Libra and energy and clarity and incisiveness is to discern what's your next step for leaving that old foundation so that you can build one slowly that feels true to you. The King of Pentacles is all about the slow building of a foundation that feeds us and sustains us. And that that is where so much empowerment comes from. So I just love this lineup. It's a very interesting combination of very present energy. Like be present as you and know you can do that taking small, incisive, decisive steps that really reflect you going home to yourself. Yes, I love that. Like I mentioned, I'm going to be doing a little activation on releasing old foundations and expectations and demands that are no longer fitting who we are becoming. And it's going to be this really fun practice we're going to do together. So I'd love to see you on Patreon for that. Also, we are just a couple weeks away from the beginning of our minor arcana journey over on patreon it starts on september 27th it goes for 12 weeks every friday there's going to be a new session out i'm working through all four suits of the minor arcana to release all of these expectations we have about how to live life releasing linear expectations releasing productivity expectations understanding our energetic rhythmic cycles breaking them into understanding each of our unique energetic rhythms because each of us has our own energetic system and in that energetic system we have different needs different rest points so as we walk through all four of these suits we're going to be looking at different aspects of the energetic creative cycle and how we can scramble these up and work with them and allow them and welcome them to come and go naturally in our energetic systems and to release shame around what we need in order to live life as our truest self so I really hope to see you there for all of those beautiful resources. You can, of course, find me on Instagram. I'm not always posting there, but I am there, and I do try to add my little, my little inspirations from time to time. And I love it when you stick around here. If you had a word to describe how you're feeling during this eclipse season, what would it be? What phrases, keywords, top priorities are coming up for you? during this eclipse season, this Libra season, leave it below. Let me know what you're thinking. I will see you back here so very soon. We have so much powerful, good stuff coming up as we move through the rest of Libra season and beyond. So I will see you back here very, very soon. Sending you all my love.